Hello there, my name is Megan and I am the Pony Club Centre Coach here at Whitbrook Equestrian Centre. These mini-series are being put together whilst we're on lockdown so that we can keep working towards our badges and uh, increase our knowledge during these difficult times. This mini-series are going to focus on the Laurany badge, which is bitting and bits, so I hope you enjoy them. Hello Pony Clubbers! So, the badge we're going to have a look at next is the Laurany badge, which looks at bitting and bridles. So, this badge is aimed at the higher level candidate. So please don't be worried if you get to parts of this badge and you think, oh, that's a little bit difficult for me or I'm finding it really tricky. Not a problem, it is aimed at higher level um, candidate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I include bits of the saddlery badge, the mini badge, as well. So we're going to start right from the beginning, looking at what is a bit, what is a bridle, and then we'll build up to the full syllabus. And we'll do this because we have the time to do it. We've got several weeks to work on this whilst we're in lockdown. So we will look at this thoroughly. If you have any questions, please do ask them on the Whitbrook Pony Club page and I'll be happy to answer them. It's not a problem at all. So just bear that in mind that some of this is a bit more tricky, a little bit more technical, but th that's okay. That's not a problem. I'll try and explain everything as simply as possible. So looking at what the Laurany badge includes, um, I will pop it up on the screen as well and also give you a link. But essentially what we want to look at is to know why riders bit their ponies. So for control of the speed, direction and performance. We want to have knowledge of what the rider's objective is. So we want to have a pony that is bitted without pain or fear working in union with the rider. The pre-bitting consideration. So what we need to consider before we put a bit in our horse's mouth, which includes looking at the conformation of the mouth, so how the mouth is built, stable management, the rider's ability and the pony's history, okay? To have basic equine dental knowledge and varying types of mouth conformation, okay? So again, that'd be basic, we'll look at the makeup of the mouth. Then bitting basics, the seven points of control, the families of bits, their characteristics, action and probable reaction from the horses. Most importantly, you need to understand clearly not just the names of the, the bits, but the actions associated with those. So which parts of the horse's anatomy they're going to put pressure on and, um, and you need to relate that to the particular bits that you're looking at. So um, that's going to be different depending on whether you're looking at a snaffle bit, for example, or a curved bit. And we will talk about what those two different things mean. So don't worry if you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not sure what that is. OK. We'll also look at nosebands and martingales and how they affect the, um, the way the bits work in the horse's mouth. So by putting different nosebands on or a martingale, you can change how the bit's action is on the horse. Okay, so we'll also look at that. We'll then have a look at bitting manufacturers, so the different types of materials that bits can be made of and what their advantages and disadvantages are. So we'll have a look at some of those as well. And you've probably come into contact with some of these yourselves. So that would be, be good to have a look at those too. And also bridles, the correct assembly of a snaffle bridle and also a double bridle. So we'll have a look at that as well. And then the role of the rider in the use of bits. OK, so that's the syllabus for the Laurany badge. So you can see it's quite a lot in there. It's quite a lot of detail. But what I'm going to try and do is start it at um, from what is a bit and work all the way up through that. And so you can pick, pick out what pieces um, are at your level. Um, and anything that you think is a little bit too difficult, either message me and I will try and explain it a little bit clearer or um, just think, oh, that's okay, I can move on to that into the future. Particularly if you're at a mini badge stage, if you usually get the little badges, then this is a big badge. So don't worry, this is going to be more knowledge than you're going to need. But you can still put the bridling and bitting information towards earning your little saddlery badge. All right, so let's get started. So the bit is the part of the bridle that is fitted into the horse's mouth over the tongue. So as you can see here, we have a selection of different bits, part of the three different bitting families as recognised by the Pony Club. 
here we have a selection of bits from the Snaffle family. The curb bit and the Bradoon, which is part of the double bridal family. And finally, the Pelham, which is part of the Pelham family, which also includes the Kimblewick bit. So here we can see an image of the horse's skull, which gives us an idea of the horse's teeth. So as you can see here, the horse has a gap between their incisor teeth at the front of their skull and their molars, which is nearer the back of the skull. And it's in this gap that we place the horse's bit. As you can see from the image here of the lower jaw, you can see where that, that gap is for where we're going to place that bit. And we want to make sure that any bit is not interfering with any of the horse's teeth, particularly the tushes, the tush teeth, which we can see sticking up there um, in the image there. Okay, so we're just going to have a look at the parts of the bridle. So this is um, from your mini saddlery badge upwards. So to pass your mini saddlery badge, you need to know a few parts of the bridle. So this is a bridle here. This is a snaffle bridle. Snaffle bridle being anything that's not got the double bits on. So everything is a snaffle bridle regardless of the bits that you've got on it, unless it is a bitless bridle or a double bridle. Okay, so this is your snaffle bridle. So the parts of our bridle, so we've got our reins, so this is what we hold on to when we ride our ponies. These ones are rubber reins, if you can see, but you can get different types. So those are your reins, okay, important to know that. This is your bit, this is what we're going to be covering a lot in the Laurelie badge, because that covers the, the, anything that's metal work. So those are your bits. You've got your nose band here, this one's a cabison nose band. You've got your cheek pieces, your throat lash, your brow band. And your headpiece, okay? Your cabison is looped through over the top here. You can see that this one is a separate piece that goes over over the top there and through and then buckled up. And um, this one has just got your standard headpiece as well. Nowadays you can see some that are shaped to help the horse a bit more at the pole. Um, and sometimes you can also have nose bands that fit, affix themselves to the bridle slightly differently. But this is what your standard would be, this is what most of our riding school ponies would have. Right, so this is a, a horse here, this is Raven, you might um, recognise her. Um, so she is at the moment wear, wearing a snaffle bridle, uh, made of leather, with a cabison nose band. And she has, um, you can see a little bit, um, she has uh, a loose ring snaffle in at the moment. So this is one of her bridles. Uh, she has uh, four bridles, and <laughs> you don't need four bridles, you can be perfectly fine with one. Um, it's more down to me being a little bit lazy and not wanting to, having to change everything every time I do something different with my horse. So she has a bridle that I lunch her in, which you would have seen on this video, I'll pop that on. Um, we don't have a nose band on that bridle, to make it easier to put the cabison on, the lunging cabison. Uh, we also have, this is her hacking bridle and will eventually be the bridle that she jumps in as well when we get around to that. Um, she also has uh, a dressage bridle, so for best, um, again, snaffle uh, bit, but it's a slightly different bit. Um, and she also has a double bridle as well, which we'll show you too. So, what we're just going to do, I'm just going to take the bridle off her and then pop it on again. Just so you can see, without losing my teeth, um, just so you can see how you pop a bridle on, okay? Hopefully you'll be able to see this, okay? So to remove the bridle, we undo the throat lash and we undo the nose band, okay? Really important to undo the nose band if you're using a flash or a grackle or a drop. It, it, you know, you're going to hurt your horse's nose if you try and take that off without it being undone. You can take a bridle off without the cabison uh, being done, uh, uh, sorry, without undoing the cabison, but it's a bit lazy. So preferably always do. So we take our bridle off our pony, always waiting for her to drop the bits. Sorry she moves out of camera shot, I'm having to do all this because it's social distancing, I'm doing all this on my own so um, some of the footage may be a bit funny. Okay right so we want to bridle our pony now, first things first, she doesn't want to do it now because she's like I've been with mum. Okay reins over the head, first things first. Now I've got control of my pony, she can't hopefully run off so I've got her secured. Okay, now, to pop the bridle on, this is the way I prefer. There are two ways. You can either do it 
uh, holding the bridle like this, or you can hold it up like this. This is a bit more difficult, particularly with taller horses. I prefer it like this. Then, um, she's very good, she's opened her mouth. But essentially, that what we saw with the anatomy, there's no teeth by the lip here. So you can pop your finger in very safely to get them to open the mouth. Then what you want to do is do the off side ear first without bending them backwards. Just gently popping them forwards. Tidy up behind the ears there. Pop your forelock out in front. And then it's just popping it all back together again. So your throat lash. You want to make sure that there's a, at least a fist, and ideally an adult's fist. So if you're small, you've got small hands, maybe you do two of them. But you want to make sure, you can see, she's then got plenty of room to flex at the gullet. So when we're riding, we talk about horses flexing at the pole. She's got to have room to do that, you can see. Good, so she's got room to do that if I want to ride her on the bit. You know, the posh outline. Okay. Whereas if it's not, then she's obviously not going to want to do that because she's going to say, ouch. Good girl. Okay, then we want to do our, our canter nut. So we've got to make sure, and you've got to make sure you have a look at the front. Is it straight? Is everything straight? Is, is, is everything in place properly? Is the nose band straight? And you want to make sure there's at least two fingers um, from the projecting cheekbone, which you can feel here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and the canter. This could probably be dropped a little bit lower on her. But that's where it is at the moment. And she's quite happy with that. And I personally do my calcins up really, really loose um, when I've been at BD competitions and the, uh, the steward has checked my tack. They tend to have a bit of a giggle because they're like, well, that's clearly not going to be too tight. Um, tightness, though, you should never, it should never be um, tighter than your two fingers. You should be able to get your two fingers in there with a calcin, one finger for a drop uh, or a flash part of the flash nose band and your, and your grackle on both, both parts there. The reason for that is that the idea of those is to, is to so the horse can't open its mouth as much. You still want them to open the mouth a little bit because you still want them to be able to chew on this bit. You want them to be able to chew on that, okay? So they need to be able to open the mouth a little bit to be able to do that, otherwise they can't flex and, and work correctly and salivate, which is what we want them to do, okay? Right, so that's my purpose. And then make sure they're all in the keepers. Very important, safety. Um, and so that's my pony bridled up, okay? So that's how we go bridle up. Um, Checking for the bit, so we have had to change her bit, so when I first got her, I used five inch bits on her, because that's what I had, that's what Spirit had. Uh, I actually pinched her, They were it was too small. So because she does well in a loose ring bit, this is the awkward thing with her, she does very well in a loose ring, but she's also very sensitive um, in her mouth, so she can get rubs quite easily. Um, so I made sure that her bit is slightly bigger, so she's now got a five and a half on her loose ring. Um, if you have a straight bar bit that, um, with fixed cheeks, they can be a little bit shorter, but your loose ring always want to make sure it's good. And I also put this on. This is called Bit Butter. She wears this as well just to help her salivate so that she doesn't get rubs in her mouth because she is a bit prone to them. Okay, lovely. So that's Raven and her bridle. So here is some footage of a riding lesson um, happening at Whitworth Equestrian Centre. The uh, camera is following myself riding Raven. And um, this is just to demonstrate the action of the bit. So you can see she is wearing a bit. She's going along there. Um, so the action of the bit will be on the following areas of the mouth and head. So the lips and the corners of the mouth, the bars of the mouth, the tongue, the roof of the mouth, the nose, the chin groove and the pole, depending on what type of bit is being used. So at the moment in this video, she is in a hanging cheek snaffle, uh, which applies pressure to the lips and the corners of the mouth, the bars of the mouth potentially, um, the, and the pole, um, just a slight pole action. And hopefully you can see that she is accepting her bridle fairly well, given that she was still fairly green at this stage. Um, so any resistance is more down to lack of balance than anything else. The horse may resist the bit for any of the following reasons. Lack of balance and training, condition of the teeth, pain and fear of the bit, insensitive or damaged mouth, conformation or temperament. Okay, so just while we've got Raven here, we're just going to have a little talk about uh, mouth anatomy and knowing a little bit before you choose your, your bit. 
So generally speaking, we will start by trying out a snaffle on our ponies. So when we get new ponies into the riding school, uh, unless we know something otherwise, we put them in a snaffle bit. So it'll either be a loose ring or an egg butt snaffle. Okay, so it'll be one of those basic types. And you'll see that when you come for a lesson here, most of our horses and ponies are in uh, either an egg butt or a loose ring. Raven right now is wearing a loose ring snaffle. Okay, now uh, she's had to, we've had to try various different bits on her. Um, and her mouth conformation, so it's useful to know the breeding of the horses because that can influence what bits will be suitable. So Raven is Connemara crossed with Irish Draft. Now both of those breeds are known to have, pick up a little bit more, see if we can see, fleshy lips. Now she's got quite a small mouth in terms of length, right? Um, and it's, she's got quite fleshy lips, really, really fleshy, all right? Um, and quite a large tongue. Now that's normal for her breeding, for Connemara's and for Irish Draft. The result of that, and what I have to be careful of with bitting her, is making sure that the bit I choose is not too thick because there's not room in there for that. Um, and ideally, we would, I would have her in a fixed cheek, in um, an egg butt, um, or something along those lines. Unfortunately, um, she tends to lean on the bit as well. <laughs> so uh, we've had to try and compromise there by having a loose ring, um, that's just making sure it's wide enough and then using the bit butter that I showed you, so this, um, to make sure that um, she doesn't get rubs because, because she's got thick lips that the bit can rub her. Um, but if I put her in a fixed um, bit, she she pull on it. Um, so whereas this gives a little bit more play, okay? Good. So it's useful to know that. Whereas uh, my last horse, Spirit, you may have met her, uh, was a thoroughbred. And so she had a longer jaw. It was narrower than this one. This one um, is wider, but shorter. Uh, Spirits was longer and narrower. Um, she had uh, longer bars, which is typical of the thoroughbred, and not so fleshy. Um, and she went better in an egg butt snaffle. So she had an egg butt snaffle, she had a hanging cheek snaffle. She, uh, Raven also uses the hanging cheek snaffle because it does help me with a little bit more control um, in the dressage tests. Just occasionally need that, don't we? Um, and um, Spirit, uh, for her double bridle, had a um, egg butt snaffle, uh, whereas Raven has a loose ring. Um, as Spirit just went so much better, it, it was too much play in the bit just didn't work with her. She needed um, something that was much more fixed whereas this one needs a bit more play. So it's just worth knowing the breeding, knowing what's um, the anatomy of your horse's mouth uh, when you're looking at, at bits. Um, Spirit could have a thicker bit, a thicker mouthpiece as well, uh, whereas this one needs thinner. So it's worth bearing that in mind when um, you're looking at bits. Um, and um, ask if you, when you have your horse's dentist, um, ask them uh, what, especially if they are also riders, ask them what their thoughts are on what sort of bit would suit your horse. Um, because they will be seeing different mouths, different teeth, day in, day out. And so they may have an opinion and they'll certainly be able to tell you whether your horse has got fleshy lips, um, fleshy bars, whether a large tongue or a small tongue, or whether there's not the covering on those bars, which you just need to be careful um, what bit you choose as a result of that. So I hope that was helpful.